Thank you, Dylan, for the introduction. As Dylan said, I'm Marco. I work at HA Proxy Technologies, and I mostly work on our Go projects that we have here. I hope everyone's enjoying the conference and that you'll enjoy this brief guide of the not so brief journey that we had with the Data Plane API project. So as all journeys, let's start at the beginning. And our beginning starts with a challenge and an idea. So the year is 2018, and the only way you could interact with the HA proxy was by changing the configuration file and reloading it, or interacting with the runtime API, or as you mostly know it as the stat socket you can configure in your configuration. The Runtime API has and had some limitations on how you can change configuration on the fly, while changing con configuration file every time you need a small change has its drawbacks too. Those were very hands-on approaches and required for you to have direct access to the machines where HA Proxy is running. And it was very unstructured. Meanwhile, the landscape began to change, and the systems were becoming more dynamic and complex and required changes quickly and reliably. Running Puppet Chef Ansible for some of these systems was beginning to be too slow, and the templates they were using were beginning to be too complex to maintain. In light of all these new use cases, for HA Proxy, we started discussing a new way and an, building an extensive API. With that challenge came an idea. We decided to call that idea the HA Proxy Data Plane API. The main goal of the Data Plane API is to interact with the HA Proxy running somewhere in a structured way, so it could be easily implemented in client apps or scripts. By interacting, we are talking about reconfiguring, monitoring the HA Proxy process, and pulling metrics out of it. The first decision that we made in the design phase was that the Data Plane API will be an external process, running side by side with the HA Proxy process. One of the main reasons for that is that we wanted to keep HA Proxy doing what it does and what it's best at, proxying and load balancing, and offloading all the external stuff to an external process. This also opened us up to using a new technology for building Data Plane API, which made it easier to find tooling, developers, and expand our great open source community. While we wanted, while we wanted an exhaustive API, that will cover all of the HA Proxy's features. We researched the most used keywords, configuration keywords, and used that as a starting point. Our release strategy was to release early, listen to the user's feedback, and grow from there. While planning all this, a control plane that was announced yesterday, now known as the Fusion Control Plane, was in mind. And we used Data Plane API project as a POC and as a building block for the new Fusion Control Plane. Let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to less than a year later, and in June 2019, we released the V1 of the Data Plane API. As I said earlier, the V1 runs as a sidecar process to the HA proxy, and we chose Go to speed up the development. Go still compiles as a full binary, and it provided us with a lot of tooling for what we wanted to do with this project. The Data Plane API is an HTTP, REST HTTP API that is described and mostly generated from the Open API specification. The Data Plane API was designed to be as simple as possible, so we didn't use any database, and the only, the only source of truth for the Data Plane API is the HA proxy configuration file. The Data Plane API tries to parse and understand the configuration file, not just template it and replace it, in, meaning that also all the edits we try to do are in place. This way, we can represent all the HA proxy configuration keywords either as a resource on the API or as a field of those resources. Since no database is used, we are using configuration file versioning to mitigate issues with concurrent edits to the file, and we have a transaction system which allows us to bunch up multiple changes into one atomic change of the configuration file. We highly value that the HA proxy process stays running and is not impacted by the data plane. HA proxy is at the front of all of your systems and is a critical component of those systems. So we take extra care that a faulty configuration isn't pushed, or even when it is, 
we resume running HA proxy with the last configuration that worked. Also, we value that we don't spam reloads. So Data Plane API has a configurable reload timeout, which you can configure. So let's say, for example, you have 10 changes in one second in the configuration file. Maybe it's not smart to reload 10 times within one second. So you can set a configuration reload timeout. And then all of those changes will be applied in the next, when the next timeout comes. With that, we are trying to reload as, as, as little as possible. So we do all the changes that we can through the runtime API and avoid reloading HA proxy. The first version of the data plane API supported fetching some metrics like stats and process infos from the runtime API. That brings us here and today. Let's talk a bit where that journey brought us. Three and a half years from, now, from, from the initial release, we are currently at version 2.6. And we like to think it's a pretty live and a healthy open source project. We've had over 42 releases. We had exactly 42 releases, over 1,400 commits from more than 30 contributors and over 70,000 downloads on GitHub, not counting the Docker downloads, as we ship the data plane API in our official HAProxy Docker images. And all of those numbers are growing steadily. We've been releasing at a quarterly pace for minor versions while supporting two previous minor versions with bug fixes. We've been also using community feedback to grow the HAProxy configuration keyword support while adding additional features. In that time, we've extended the runtime API to support stuff like ACLs, maps, SSL certificates, and other stuff. While also by popular demand, we added file management. So now you can use Data Plane API to, to ship your files to your HA proxy, files like SSL certificates, map, map files, SPOE configurations, and the like. The Data Plane API is also now used by many for service discovery, as we've implemented console service discovery and AWS service discovery that is based on EC2 instances and their tags. Robert had a talk about, about that just before me, so he explained that a bit too. So I'm going to talk about the recent improvements that we made in the last year. Why are we so focused on those configuration keywords? As I said, Data Plane API tries to understand and parse the HA proxy configuration. And what it doesn't understand, what, it, what we don't support, it, it, write back, it writes back to the configuration at the end of your sections. So you keep your configuration, but you cannot edit it or view it via the API. This has proven to be an issue, as most of our issues on GitHub have come by constantly re requesting new keywords. So in the last year, we heavily prioritized catching up with all of the HA proxy keywords that are, that are available. And I'm glad to announce that in the latest repo, we have full support for HA proxy configuration in the Data Plane API. The new release, 2.7, that is coming later this month, will have that support. But with that, our journey doesn't end. We do still have goals and challenges to motivate us. So let's talk briefly about what the future brings for the Data Plane API. As I mentioned earlier, later this month, we'll be releasing 2.7 version of the Data Plane API. We'll be releasing it in line with the HA proxy community 2.7, and we want to move our release cycle to be the same as the HA proxy. So now we'll be having two, two releases yearly, with one release being long term support. We'll keep the version parity with the HA proxy community to minimize confusion, and we want to, want to do that moving forward. Just to reiterate, the version 2.7 will support all previous HA proxies and will work on all previous versions of HA proxy. But moving forward, we're considering about having one version of the Plane API supporting the same version of HA proxy to mitigate some issues that we have with backward compatibility and other stuff. So just to reiterate the, the, the features that are coming with the 2.7 data plane API. So as I said, full support for HA proxy configuration keywords. 
using different reload strategies. So currently, you could configure what you want to you, how do you reload, restart your HA proxies. But now we've implemented S6 and systemd strategies. So if you're using that, you can just set a strategy to, let's say, systemd, set your uh, service name, and then we'll do the reloading, starting, status checks, and everything else internally. We will now also be supporting multiple default sections that will be distinguished by name. And we're adding support for the from keyword on backends and frontends. So you can specify from which default section do you want to inherit settings in your frontends and, back and backends. This is a feature that was implemented in HA Proxy, I believe, in 2.4. And if you're running HAProxy 2.4 or newer, we'll be supporting that. Also, we've added the ability to add and delete servers via the runtime API, which is a really cool thing because now when you add or delete servers, where applicable, we'll be doing it through the stat socket without reloading HAProxy every time. Moving forward for 2.7, we want to make the data plane API to be a go-to way to integrate with HAProxy. So on our roadmap for 2.8, we currently have these items in development. Support for all runtime API commands. Currently, we support most of them. There are a couple of those that we yet don't support, but we'll be implementing this shortly. We'll be adding Let's Encrypt support, so you can use Let's Encrypt for your certificate renewals on HAProxy instances with the data plane API. Also, we'll be trying to support comments in the HAProxy configuration files. We've been having a lot of issues with people that when they migrate to the data plane API, their comments disappear. And we'll try to in integrate this into the API so that all of your comments stay intact and those comments are exported to the API as descriptions of the resources. We'll be expanding our service discovery modules. The next in line is the Co console nomad service discovery implementation. And even farther in the future, we have several items on our roadmap. But we are very keen on listening your feedback to help us build the best roadmap that will be the most useful for all of our users. A couple of things that we've discussed but not looked at yet are integrations with HashiCorp's Vault or any other secret management tools. So you can fetch secrets using the data plane API and use them then in your HA proxy configurations. Other service discovery integrations. People have been re requesting OpenStack service di discovery integrations, Docker host, Zookeeper, or whatever do you use. Also, to make your life easier, we are exploring a possibility of a command line interface to interact with the data plane API. So you don't have to use curl or any other uh, REST HTTP client. Something like an HA proxy CTL. This is still in early development. I already said that goals and challenges motivate us for this journey. And some of those goals have altered from the goals that we had four years ago, which brought a new pack of challenges. Let's try to unpack them. To iterate the original goals, we know HAProxy is best at what it does, and we don't want the data plane API to interfere with that. The data plane API is here to help with all the external stuff without interfering with the traffic that goes to the HA proxy. So all of the integrations that you might have in mind. Some of the stuff that we want to be able to do is changing configuration of HA proxy on the fly as much as we can, adding dynamic stuff into the stat socket and exposing that into the data plane API. Other stuff that we are looking on is more service discovery registries to reconfigure HAProxy. Moving for that, we want tighter integration with HAProxy from fetching metrics and logs and exposing them on the data plane API. We want users to have a seamless migration from not using the data plane API to using the data plane API. Currently, the data plane API reformats the configuration file. So it reorders some commands and it loses the comments. The functionality stays the same, but We've had feedback, and we value that feedback, that that may be scary for some people. People have big configuration files, and once they are all mumbled up, even though we guarantee that the functionality stays the same, that might be scary for some people, and we are looking ways to mitigate this. 
Also, we want new users joining HAProxy. HAProxy has grown a lot, and its configuration can be simple, but can also be vast and complex. With the Data Plane API, we want to simplify that configuration as much as possible. For example, we are looking at ways to present HAProxy configuration as a YAML or a JSON file, so it can be more, so it can be more used by other people. Also, to explain some of those challenges that I, that I mentioned, here are a couple of, ex of examples of what happens when you use the Data Plane API and you bring your own configuration file with it. As you can see here, the ordering of the commands is, is re rewritten in this front end, but the functionality basically stays the same. As I said, when this grows complex, we understand that this might be scary for some people, and we are looking for ways to mitigate this. Another challenge that we're looking at is the implicity and ordering of the HAProxy configuration file, which can be which can be difficult to express on API resources. So we are trying to change the configuration file to be as explicit as possible. I've already mentioned the from keyword. In the first example, you can see that the frontend FE2 will only inherit mode TCP from the default section. It won't inherit anything from the previous default section. And in the second example, if you are running HAProxy 2.4 in your and Data Plane API, this is what the Data Plane API will do to the file. It will change it, but we believe this is a change for the better. Because you get name defaults, and you get the from keywords, which explicitly state from which default section you are inheriting your parameters. It's easier then to parse even for humans, but much more easier to parse for machines. You can see how those two examples are in conflict with each other, and this is what, where we have the biggest challenge. We want to be able to be explicit as possible on the API, bring new users and simplify your configurations, while for the veteran users bringing their own configuration, we want to make minimal changes so they feel safe when they are running Data Plane API. Here we still have a lot of work to do, and once we figure out those challenges, the goal is to have the Data Plane API tightly integrated with HAProxy. We are thinking of a different way different way of changing metrics like stats or even logs between the two processes. This way we can be more efficient with integrating, for example, Elk Stack or ClickHouse or whatever you want for your logs from the Data Plane API directly. One of the challenges also that we noted and then I mentioned was the human usage of the Data Plane API. When you, as an engineer, want to change something in your HA proxy using the Data Plane API, you use curl, you use some kind of a REST API client, and it can be cumbersome for some. That's why we are here presenting the initial version of the HA proxy CTL that we started to build, and these are examples how you can add or delete bind easily from the command line. We are not set on the name yet, but this is what we currently have. Now that we've gone through some challenges, we have work to do to mitigate them, and we intend to work closely with you to identify new challenges and set new goals. This, was, this is a great and fun journey we are on, at least for us at HAProxy Technology building it. And it wouldn't be possible without you, our users and community. So special thanks goes to all of our contributors, all the creators of, of, of our issues, anyone giving any feedback, it's invaluable to us. I would also like to take this opportunity to invite all of you to visit our GitHub page and get involved. If you haven't yet, download the Data Plane API, give it a try, raise an issue, or just contribute. And that's all for me. <laughs> Thank you, Marco. So we have time for maybe one or two questions. If you have one in the audience, just raise your hand. We did have a couple come in on the chat. <clears throat> so the first is, uh, okay. Why did you choose the Open API specification? Well, the Open API specification gives us a lot of tooling and uh, 
first reason we chose it, because it generates a lot of boilerplate code for us. And how we work is work specification first. So first, we write the specific open API specification for the resources, and from there, we can build a boilerplate code and then implement only what we need. Also, the open API specification that we ship gives everybody an opportunity to generate their client libraries in any language that they are using to be more easily integrated with the data plane API. We have one in the audience. Yeah, it's me again. Uh, hey, you mentioned uh, Let's Encrypt integration. Yeah. Are you talking about like, um, sorry, are you talking about like uh, just an Acme client for solving HTTP 01 challenges or something else? We're talking about uh, just fetching certificates when they expire, renewing certificates, pushing them to HA proxies, something like that. Yeah, we still haven't started working on it, but it's on our roadmap. We're looking. Yeah, for renewing certificates of Let's Encrypt using the Data Plane API integration. Okay, good enough for me. Thanks. Great. That's all the time that we have for questions. There were a few that came in the chat. So for those of you who submitted questions in the chat, we'll ask Marco and we'll try to respond to those uh, in the stream. So thank you so much, Marco. Thank you.